going to be on something we have covered before in previous videos which is an updated version for 2021 and it's going to be a little bit more practical rather than the theory behind the Poisson distribution model which some of the previous videos have covered which I'd recommend you go and look at if you haven't got any sort of uh, prior knowledge, knowledge sorry, of the um, Poisson distribution model. So this time we're going to be looking at the Poisson distribution model uh, for the English Premier League 2021. Uh, the date today is, oh, I don't know, but 21st is it of summer of april uh, it's accurate up until today the day of posting basically the figures are accurate up to today um so just a very quick recap for those of you that haven't seen anything as i said i'd recommend going and watching any of the videos uh, the Poisson distribution model measures the probability of independent events occurring um, a certain amount of times within a set period so for the typo there um, so basically it means if you know the average amount of time something's likely to happen you can use the model to calculate how likely the other outcomes are based on the given average um, so in football terms which is what we're interested in if we know the average amount of goals scored and conceded by all the teams in the league we can calculate their attacking and defensive strengths based on those figures and use them to predict outcomes of games that's the theory so firstly we need to calculate the team's strengths and we need to do this for every single team in the league so for the premier league in 2021 as we are now we need the attacking strength and defensive strengths for each team and we need those for separately for home and for away so we'll have one figure for home matches and one for away matches meaning we'll have in this video we'll use Arsenal as an example purely because it's in alphabetical order I haven't got an allegiance to Arsenal but got to use someone so we'll have Arsenal's home attacking strength and home defensive strength and we'll have Arsenal's away attacking strength and away defensive strength so like I say we'll have four for each um, for the attacking strength, the way we work that out is the amount of goals scored at home divided by the amount of games played at home divided by the average amount of goals scored in home games throughout the league. And the defensive strength is similar, it's goals conceded at home divided by games played at home, which would be the same figure, divided by the league average amount of goals conceded in home games. So if we look a little bit further along, We've used Arsenal as I say for an example calculation and here we've just got a little breakdown of their home and away form so far this season uh, so to work out their home attacking strength we can see that Arsenal have played 16 games this year so far uh, 16 games and at home they've scored 19 goals so we're doing 19 divided by 16 which gives us 1.18 average goals per game at home we divide that by the league average which if I skip to the next slide you'll see is 1.35 so you'll see a bit more of that in the next slide so just you'll have to take my word until the next slide that these averages are correct so we divide that by 1.35 which is the league average to give us 0.87 as their home attacking strength for defensive strength it's a very similar picture and as it happens with Arsenal they've conceded as many goals as they've scored at home so it's exactly the same calculation at the start but 1.30 is the average amount of goals conceded at home in the league so that gives us 0.91 and we do the same calculation for away attacking strength and away defensive strength using the figures here so we've got 25 and 17 as you see i won't talk you through it all so we get 1.15 and 1.45 and this is what I, I showed quickly earlier this is um all of the figures compiled so i've done this in an excel spreadsheet and just copied it in here and as i say it's, it's current as of today um we've got every league in the t every team in the league these are the goals scored averages as you see we used 1.18 previously and against because they scored and uh, conceded the same amount at home uh, and then these are the important figures that we're looking for for the Poisson the attacking strength and the defensive strength so these are the numbers that we'll be using going forward the goal scored and against figures are simply a way to get us to these figures so these are the figures we're going to need so I've decided we'll predict the outcome of the next Premier League game which does also happen to be an Arsenal game uh, I think it's in two days um, so yeah, so we're going to predict the Arsenal versus Everton match and walk through and show you how to do that. So first we need to find out what each team's expected goals figures are. So we've got their attacking strengths and their defensive strengths and we use those figures to predict um, expected goals in a specific game using figures from both teams. So for Arsenal, the way to figure this out for the home team is the home attacking strength, which we've just calculated as 0.87, times the away defensive strength which for Arsenal which for Everton sorry is 1.37 you'll see from the previous slide 1.37 
and then times the average amount of home goals which we seen earlier was 1.35 you can go back and check these on the spreadsheet so you know you know so you can make sense of them they are they do all tally up i've i've, I've checked <laughs> um so that gives us an expected goals for arsenal of 1.63 so everton's expected goals so for this we use everton's away attacking strength which is 103 times arsenal's home defensive strength which is 091 times the average away goals scored in the league which is 1.36 and that gives us 1.27 so we'll run out and throw your mortgage on Arsenal beating Everton 1.63 to 1.27 yeah it's not that easy is it um, so those figures aren't as um, clear cut as they may seem it doesn't mean definitely that Arsenal are going to win the game just because they've got a higher figure here because the Poisson distribution model needs to be applied now and that will use um, various sort of uh, factors to do with weight in the the averages uh, for being home and away and it'll it'll do its thing like i say if you want to know more about the ins and outs and the intricacies of the Poisson distribution model you can check previous videos or check the web probably it'll explain better than me so this is what it gives us if we punch this into the Poisson distribution formula which you can find online i wouldn't advise um using the formula and sort of breaking it down yourself there are many Poisson distribution calculators if you type it in online you can punch in the two figures we've got for expected goals and it will give you outcomes so for Arsenal versus Everton we can see that these are the outcomes these are the percentage of chance according to the figures of these score lines so we can see that the highest probability is a 1-1 one -one, with 11.39 percent next it's 2-1 Arsenal 9.28 and third it's 8.97 which is 1-0 Arsenal um, on the face of it we shouldn't be using bias when we're using mathematical modelling, so we shouldn't really be thinking about what we think about Arsenal and Everton at certain times in the in the uh, season and their form and whatnot. But I mean, on the face of it, I'd say that looks like a kind of reasonable reasonable guess at that sort of. They're they're a very even set of teams, and I think you could see the result going that way. So so we don't know what. Get rid of that. Apologies. Um, so if we go into the next slide. By adding all of those percentages up, so if you add all the greens up, you'll get Arsenal with a 45.83% chance of winning. If you add all the yellows up, you'll get a 24.33% chance of a draw. And if you add all of the away, you'll get a 29.84% of an Everton win. So we're looking at 45.83%. Now, we look at possible trading angles of what we could use these figures for. It's all well and good having these figures. What are we using them for? I don't advise going and blindly backing Arsenal to win. I don't advise blindly backing the three score lines that we've looked at because, as I've mentioned before, it's a model that we can use as a tool in our trading, not to trade purely on the figures that it gives out because there's no human factors, there's no injury suspensions, uh, motivations of the two teams, as in who needs the points more, um, future fixtures, have the fixture congestion and squad rotation. So. We use it as a tool, as I say. Um, back to lay Arsenal, if odds offer value. So, as we can see here, 45.83% equates at 2.18 in terms of odds. So, if we can get odds of higher than 2.18, or around 2.18, we can say we're getting a value bet, and we might be able to, might be happy to lay, uh, to lay a bet on there. Back to lay Arsenal is what I would do as a trader rather than betting purely on Arsenal. So that would involve backing Arsenal to win, backing the favourite, and then laying them once they take the lead to cash out for a guaranteed profit. Um, so that's that's the angle I would probably take if I were going to do that. I don't think it's massively clear cut, so they're probably not a big enough favourite for me to get involved in, depending on what the odds look like at kickoff. But that is a, a you know a possible angle. Trading the 1 0, 1 1, or 2 1 score line certainly looks like an interesting angle for me. So, these three score lines are the most likely score lines, and there's there's value to be found in the correct score market. The odds are often very high um, for the odd, for the correct score, so I would never never trade purely on one, one score line. But this is a nice spread of scores. So, you've got 1 0, 1 1, and 2 1. It's probably my favourite three to trade actually, because if a goal goes in for either team early on, you're still in the trade because you've got the 1-1 one, one and you've got the 2-1 whereas if we have 1-0, 2-0, 2-1 or 1-0, 2-0, 0-0 for example you're struggling once the wrong team scores if you like but I think with this these score lines you definitely got a chance of trading those 
uh, and being able to come out with a decent profit. Uh, trading over 2.5 goals, I'd suggest after 50 minute, after 15 minutes, so if it's still nil-nil, you might want to get involved with that. Um, I say that because before 15 minutes, the odds probably aren't going to be great. The, I think this, the market will be expecting goals. I haven't checked the odds, but I suspect that over 2.5 goals will probably um, be less than evens. So it might not be value, but if you wait for the first 15 minutes or so and it's still nil-nil and the game looks lively, you could certainly get involved in that market. A possible both teams to score trade again. This, the the odds on this aren't going to be great. Um, I wouldn't go throwing too much money at this early doors. Maybe later on in the game, if it's one nil after seventy minutes or something, you might be. But uh, again, this is just a, things that we can interpret from the distribution model. I'm not saying they are necessarily good trades to make. It's just what the model might suggest. Uh, or <laughs> you could ignore everything I've said because it's Arsenal. And as brilliant as Arsenal are and as uh, much flowing football and mercurial talent they've got, they always seem to let me down. I always think, yep, Arsenal have turned a corner. Arsenal are going to win this. I watched their last game. They were brilliant. And then they go and lose to somebody at the lower league, uh, at the bottom of the table. So you could just ignore it completely. But if you were to take the model purely on its merits and not use bias, as, <laughs> as I've just talked about, then the above trades could be something that you'd be you'd be interested in. So I hope that was a, a quick and uh, useful video for you to talk about the Poisson distribution model in 2021. Um, feel free to use those figures on the on the spreadsheet to inform your betting for the following weekend. I'm going to try and put a video up predicting most of the, the Premier League fixtures for this weekend if I get time using those exact figures. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. Hit subscribe so that you don't miss any of the videos because as I've mentioned before I can't guarantee exactly when they'll be out. Um, yeah, and drop a comment on any topics you'd like me to cover in videos coming up. I've got a few topics that um, I'm, I'm in the process of making videos for, but if there are any trading angles, um, any concepts, anything to do with staking plans, bankroll management, um, unders, overs, uh, win draw, win markets, any anything that you, you'd think you might like to to have a bit more information on, do let me know. And please check the blog out as well at themathbetman.com. Um, I'm a lot more comfortable writing than I am presenting, to be honest, so I can go into a lot more depth on there, and this video is covered in the blog too, um, and as I say, I can I can give more detail and sort of feel a lot more comfortable writing on the blog, so please do check that out. Uh, so yeah, thanks very much, and uh, I hope to see you back here soon.